What's going on you guys, Riley here. Today we've got a super fun video for you. Today we are reviewing this 2020 SS1LE Camaro and comparing it to this 2017 Camaro ZL1. So for those of you that have stuck around the channel for quite a while, you will know that I have had one of these in the past and now this is my current car. So today we're gonna talk about how they differ and why the Camaro ZL1 and the Camaro SS1LE are some of the best bang for your buck vehicles on the market when it comes to an all-around performance car that you can also daily drive and does just a little bit of everything. So let's go ahead and dive right into this video. First, we'll go ahead and talk about the SS1LE because it is new, and then we'll move on to the ZL1, then we'll talk about the differences, then we'll take these things both out for a little rip. So this 1LE is owned by my good buddy McKinsey, who actually bought this car from me a few months ago. So I will plug his Instagram down below, go give him a follow and check him out. Uh, this color is shock, which is kind of like a bright green, kind of like a bright yellow it's it's like a rolling tennis ball going down the road uh, and it's super cool you got to see it in person the camera doesn't do it uh, total justice here but the cool thing about the SS1 LEs is that you get almost all of the goodies that the ZL1 has when it comes to brakes suspension wheels tires all of the fun stuff that really matters um, you just miss out on the supercharger but for a lot of people that's plenty fine because that means less weight up front and honestly a little bit better of a track car when you're doing uh, small track racing not only that but it's one of the best back road carvers probably ever um, and for the money which these come in right about the mid the mid forty thousand dollar range it is a truly a spectacular value so a few notable things about the 1le package as opposed to a regular 1ss camaro is that you get of course the wider wheels tires the much larger brakes so these are six piston brembo brakes up front four piston out back uh, of course the hood is wrapped in a satin black finish as well as the front splitter down here which looks super aggressive i love the way this front end looks with that splitter there it's just super, super mean. Um, you also, on the interior, get a heads-up display, Recaro racing seats, and a bunch of other goodies in there. So it essentially takes all of the best characteristics of a performance car and shoves them in a, a 1SS V8 Camaro, and it turns into just this beautiful thing right here. Also, you do get a blade spoiler back here on the deck lid, and then down below, you might notice it does have the quad exhaust, so it is the dual mode exhaust. So you've got the loud mode and the quiet mode, whatever your preference is there. So under the hood of the 1LE, you will find an LT1 6.2 liter naturally aspirated Chevy small block V8, 455 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque, which is good enough for zero to 60 times of right about four seconds, give or take, and then quarter mile times of right about 12 seconds. So definitely a very quick car. Not only that, the braking capabilities are just incredible with those massive six piston brakes. And one of the also key features of a 1LE packaged car is you get the magnetic ride suspension so it's a tunable suspension that you can have uh, in its most stiff setting which is like a race car or you can throw it into tour mode and it's a nice comfortable cruiser so what's great about the 1LE is that you can buy one of these for about $20,000 less than a ZL1. You just miss out on the supercharger, which in the ZL1s, it's an LT4, still a 6.2 liter V8. They just add a little supercharger up here to give you an extra, give or take 200 horsepower. So with the ZL1, 650 horsepower, 650 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60s are in the mid to lower three second range and quarter miles are gonna be somewhere in kind of that low 11 second range. So either car is a very quick car um, either car is a fantastic performing car it's just a personal preference on which one you like better if you're going for the lighter weight a little bit more agile version go for the 1LE if you want just the big power maybe you're into roll racing and that type of thing maybe the ZL1 is a better option either way you can't go wrong but what differs mainly between these two cars is going to be the price difference so on the right brand new right about $45,000 brand new on the left right about $65,000 Big difference there. However, what I will say that's going for the 1LEs is that they hold their value a little bit better. So you can buy one of these in the mid 40s. You can drive it for a little while, turn around and sell it, and you can go to cars.com, Auto Trader, any of those used car websites and see what they're selling for used. They're still selling for pretty close to what they are new. Whereas on the ZL1s, you buy one for $65,000, $70,000. Pre-owned, you're gonna be looking somewhere closer to about 50. So really, when you're looking at a pre-owned ZL1, you could buy a new SS1LE for about the same money. That's when it becomes a very interesting choice of what would you rather have, a pre-owned ZL1 or a brand new SS1LE. 
Now with the One LEs, there are a few interior options that you can get now for 2021. This one here is a six-speed manual, which up until 2021 was the only way you could get a One LE. However, now you can get the new 10-speed automatic in an SS One LE, if that is your preference. Uh, very, very quick shifting. The 10-speed is a great transmission if you're looking for an automatic. Other than that, the six-speed is, uh, in my opinion, really the way to go. But of course, the awesome Recaro racing seats here on the inside, which are actually very comfortable. You can do long road trips and you're totally fine. Uh, the rev match feature there on the paddle shifters, which we will demonstrate here shortly. You've got the controls over here for your heads up display, the little mode selector down there, which goes from tour, sport, track, and weather. And uh, other than that, this is a kind of a, not necessarily a bare bones car, because you do get a lot of features, but it does not have, for example, the ambient lighting or the Bose audio system or any of the extra stuff that's just kind of cool to have, but nothing you really need. For example, on the ZL1s, they will all have the upgraded Bose audio system, the ambient lighting there in the doors, as well as on the dash. Um, but aside from that, they almost look identical on the inside. And that is because they are very, very similar. Really the big difference between these two cars, of course, the price and that supercharger. So whether you're looking for an SS1 LE or a ZL1, I don't think there's a wrong answer there, a wrong choice. Uh, either car is absolutely fantastic. They both look incredible and both are fantastic performing cars. This is coming from somebody who's put a little bit over 10,000 miles on one of these and uh, right about 15,000 miles on one of these. Either car is absolutely fantastic, but let's go ahead and take a trip down memory lane and take the 1LE out for a little spin and see if my thoughts and opinions have changed at all after owning the ZL1 for a little while or see if the 1LE really is still that best bang for your buck golden child that Chevrolet has created. All right, guys. Well, this is kind of uh, nostalgic sitting back in a 1LE. So let's go ahead and take this thing out for a spin and i'd be lying to you if i said i have not driven this car before because i in fact have driven this car before to the gas station when i sold it so uh it's kind of funny comes comes full circle there um so right off the bat with the 1le driving it it feels exactly the same as a zl1 um, with the manuals that's where you'll notice one little difference so this clutch is a regular clutch i guess you call it a single disc clutch uh, whereas on the zl1s they're a twin disc clutch so um, it's a little bit different in that regard but aside from everything else i mean looking out the window it feels exactly the same same seat same steering wheel same shifter same transmission um the, it's just so weird how similar these cars are and how much of a uh, performance bargain this car is because it's the same car with a little bit less horsepower for 20 grand less i mean that's it's hard to argue with and <laughs> i forgot so on these newer ones they added more pops and crackles when you let off the gas and on, on diesel i think they started that in 2019 i don't know what they changed but it sounds absolutely amazing that's something i wish my car did more just because i'm obnoxious and i love the pops and crackles so like we're in third if you just let on a little bit don't know how well you can pick it up on camera but that's just so much fun um, and i can only imagine if you went with headers and just magnified that sound even more how, uh, how much fun that would be so something you might find a little interesting is uh, my 1LE was the very first manual car I had ever owned. It was also really the first manual car I got to spend a lot of seat time with. Uh, so I, the night I bought my 1LE, I drove it off the, uh, the showroom floor at the dealership. I ended up stalling it like three or four times on my way home that night. I was like, it's fine. I'll figure it out. It's fine. I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, so it's actually a pretty easy car to learn how to drive manual with. So if, if you're somebody who, who has a a big love and passion for performance cars and you want to get into owning a performance car this honestly would be a pretty good starting point because the sky's the limit with the the skill level that you can uh, achieve with this car so for example uh randy popes he is the motor trend basically test driver for all the cool stuff that motor trend gets he's the one that sets all the crazy fast lap times he himself owns a four-cylinder 1LE, um, and that's just his like daily driver play around car, and that's pretty cool that the person that drives absolutely everything would go out of his way to buy a 1LE, and that kind of speaks to just how good these cars are. So you can get the SS 1LE, you can get a four-cylinder 1LE, a six-cylinder 1LE, and a ZL1 1LE. The only car out of that bunch I would not necessarily say don't buy, but be a little cautious of buying would be the ZL1 1LE because the suspension in that car is so stiff. So there is absolutely just no bushings or anything. Um, the suspension is bolted directly to the frame. So you feel every little bump going down the road. Um, so that, <laughs> so that would be the only thing I would say to just be cautious of, but 
dude, this is just plenty of power. It's plenty of fun. Yeah, it's not as fast as a ZL1, but who really cares? How often are you really 100% on the gas? Not very often. If you're going down a back road, they're gonna feel the exact same. It's still plenty enough to put a smile on your face. Uh, I drag raced mine many times. I was that weird guy that bought a 1LE, a handling package Camaro, and put drag radials on the back for whatever reason. I had a blast with that car. And driving this one, it really brings me back to just how much fun I had with that, that how much fun I had with that car, how good of a value it is. What other car can you find for 45 grand brand new that has this amount of performance, this good of looks? I mean, there's, there's nothing, especially when you compare it to something European. Um, the rev match feature, which is just like a cheat code for driving a manual. I mean, I didn't even touch the gas there and it's perfect. Um, it just does everything so, so well. And it, I don't know how anybody could say anything bad about these cars. It's, they're, they're just so impressive. What's great about the Camaros versus a Mustang is just the amount of torque they've got and it's just just so healthy, it's so easy to drive. That's me rev matching on my own. It's just, that's a, it's such an easy car to drive fast and an easy car to just kind of go out and just have fun and not really care about anything. If you're backed by a warranty, so if anything happens, you just take it to Chevrolet and say, hey, it broke. Other than that, I mean, it's what a great car. So we're just gonna ease into a little back road blast through here, just nothing crazy. But what's funny about this car is it feels exactly the same in the corners as a ZL1 does. And it just hugs the road so well. You can just point and aim wherever you wanna go. The car's like, all right. And that's, it's kind of a double-edged sword there with this car is that it is so good. It's really hard to achieve 10 tenths in this car because on a public roadway, 10 tenths in this thing, you're going straight to jail. So. That part of it's a little frustrating, but it just makes you want to just push even more. It makes you that much of a better driver and you can hop in anything after this and you'll be like, why doesn't this car handle the same as the one Ali I was just in? It's just, this is, it's a next level of performance for 45 grand. I mean, it's just amazing what you can get for the money. Well, we had some fun with the one Le. Now let's swap over to the ZL1 and see if uh, anything changes. So setting off now in the uh, ZL1, some of the most immediate noticeable things is yes, the clutch is a little bit different. Um, I honestly prefer the 1LE clutch a little bit better. It's easier to drive. Uh, this car, you get a lovely supercharger up front, which just a nice little, little wine up there. And then of course, this one does have an aftermarket exhaust system on it. So that extra oomph behind that right pedal um, or behind the right foot underneath your gas pedal uh, definitely is quite enjoyable. Aside from that, they feel exactly the same on the inside. Um, this one does have a few more features, being a ZL1, the heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. Um, honestly, the only features that I would say are worth getting a either a 2SS or a ZL1 for would be blind spot monitoring. That's a nice feature to have. Uh, and then the, um, where was I going with this? Ah, the upgraded Bose audio system. So it is a really good sound system in this car. Um, the 1SS isn't bad, but this one actually sounds pretty solid. Um, aside from that, they are very, very similar and it makes you really question why would anybody spend 20 grand more for one of these brand new? Um, it's for this reason right here. <laughs> it literally never gets old. Um, yeah, so I've done that many, many times in this car, and every time I do it, it never fails to put a smile on my face. So that's why you spend the extra money on a ZL1. Or you buy a 1LE and you modify the 1LE, do everything exactly how you'd like to, and you'll probably still be into a 1LE for less money than one of these. Then you can do your own supercharger or headers or whatever you want to do, and uh, you've got just as good of a car because everything underneath is essentially the same car. Same suspension setup, same brakes, same wheels, tires. Very, very similar. But uh, having the extra <laughs> the extra boost and everything in the ZL1 is, is a bunch of fun. And one more time, just for good measure. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a lot of fun. So, as I said, either way you want to go, 1LE or ZL1, whether it's a price thing, whether it's a power thing, whether you're looking for something that's gonna give you the oh crap face every time you get on the gas, or if you want something that's a little bit more balanced that you can just take out through a back road and just have a blast with, either way, 
I think these are two of the best cars on the market right now. Um, you look at everything else that's out there, there's a lot of good options, don't get me wrong, but for the money, for 50 grand-ish or below, there's nothing really that competes with these things uh, for that same price range. Sure, there's a Hellcat you can buy that has the same straight line speed as a ZL1, does not handle nearly as well. Sure, there's a Performance Pack Mustang and a GT350 Mustang. Those handle pretty well, they just don't have the same power as these. Um, and even still, if you gave me a 1LE or a GT GT350 and told me to pick one, I would still pick the 1LE because the GT350 is just rev so darn high, you're just always in second gear anytime you're doing anything fun in that car. I prefer to be, you know, first, second, third, fourth, rowing through the gears, enjoying the experience versus just staying in second and hitting red line, back off, hit second, back off. To me, that's not, not as fun. So in summary, either way you go, you're gonna have an awesome time. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. If it's helped you out with some insight as to a ZL1 or 1LE, um, whether it's just learning about the two cars or whether it's just for pure enjoyment. Uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video and be sure to give the 1LE owner a follow on Instagram. I'll put his Instagram down below, so go check him out. The shot color is just, it's so badass. I love that color. Every time you see it, it just kind of brightens up your day and it's like, ha, that's different. I like it. If you're gonna buy a sports car, you might as well buy it in a bright color. But thank you guys for watching this video. As always, if you guys are in the need for a brand new or pre-owned car, come see your boy over at Parkway Chevrolet. We'll get you taken care of. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.